In September of 2023, I uploaded a video titled Kids 1995 Larry Clark is pretty scummy. A stream of consciousness I was compelled to capture, edit, and release into the world upon watching the 2021 documentary We Were Once Kids. And the only reason I was able to do that was because I have the, the Blu-ray limited edition set from Umbrella Entertainment. It's dope. This video came together with zero present notes to reference, no script, and in an age of meticulously crafted video content, my directionless rambling on such sensitive topics topics made it easy to misconstrue many of the important points I was trying to make. Some comments were just annoyed that they stumbled on a video that was like this. It's like I was getting into personal matters and it was just all over the place. Some comments, though, <laughs> others were looking for any reason they could to accuse me of being, for lack of a better word, a piece of shit person. Today I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to give you the structured review covering both the 1995 movie Kids and the 2021 documentary We Were Once Kids that you probably always wanted. And two, with this review, I will reference my original video at times with footage backing up every major point I'd originally made because I noticed a lot of people were taking what I said out of context, and that's bullshit. Thus shitting on all of my haters for trying to twist up my words. I was coming off of two strikes, alright? I would have just kept on reviewing my gory, mindless horror movies if YouTube hadn't struck me down with two Caligula videos, but that that's neither here nor there. Director Larry Clark in the 90s had a particular vision in mind. He wanted to capture the youth in a way that had never been done before. He was on the ground floor interacting with groups of young people that happen to be engaging in or struggling with crime, drama, drug addiction, homelessness, poverty, and violence. You need only to have been born in a household containing one of those factors in order to become potentially exposed to all of them. And a lot of us people that have been through some real shit for some reason resonate with this movie Kids, up to a point. Kids launched the careers of actors Chloe Sevigny and Rosario Dawson and screenwriter Harmony Kareen, all of them unknown teenagers at the time. To get access to the kind of young people he wanted to portray in kids, Clark even learned how to skateboard. I knew that I wanted to make a film about something I didn't know about because all my work had been autobiographical. And so I wanted to do something else. And so I look around at all the teenagers and who's the most exciting visually? Skateboarders, you know, because they were like outlaws. They were like uh, punk rockers, you know. So at 47, I had learned how to skate, and I paid the price. I broke my shoulder, and I did a lot of crazy things. And, uh, but the kids respected me. And after skating with them uh, for five, six years, California and uh, uh, New York City, I could skate fast enough and bomb hills, and I could keep up with them. And w we would go down to Wall Street in New York and skate all night. There was nobody there, right? Today, that film would be impossible to make. It would be. Why do you think that is? Well, first of all, if, it, it, if that film hadn't been made, we made it. We shot it in 1994. It was released in 95. Because right after that film was made, the Supreme Court, kind of during that film and just before that we, we started shooting, uh, the United States did this study of pornography, and all of a sudden pornography is in the news. Is it good for you? Is it bad? How, how is it affecting our, our children? Just the aspects of kids and drugs and nudity and all that uh, would have made people nervous. And when kids came out, all the kids said, that's just, that's just real life, because the purpose, what I was trying to do was show you the secret world of kids that I discovered by being a skater with them. And they used to lie to me like they would lie to any adult, you know. You know, I always use condoms, blah, 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 blah. And so I was trying to make the world about kids when no adults were allowed. Because when you're a kid, when I'm a kid, we're with our friends and we have a secret world that no adult is allowed into. Our parents are not allowed, our teachers are not allowed. No adult is allowed. I was allowed in that world. I was privileged. And so the way kids is, is filmed, uh, a lot of kind of documentary style over the shoulder, you know. Uh, I wanted the audience to feel that they were like eavesdropping <clears throat> on a world that if they weren't watching this film, they would never know about.
We drank a lot together. Did a lot of acid. We had lots of fun, but we also we also had a lot of issues. You know, I've seen people get like stabbed to death, like right there. I've seen people get shot out the window, like right there. To have the weed dealers, kids who went to punk rock music, skateboarders, and the, the musicians, and the kids who went to the clubs, all hanging there. We would be skating, and some random person would just be like, yo, Harold, and we meet all these people. So this kid comes around, he comes with Harold, this kid from Tennessee. He's like, yo, this is my friend Harmony, yo. He's going to NYU film school, blah, blah, blah. He used to stay in our crib, but we didn't know who the fuck he was, like. They weren't completely innocent. They were out here drinking, doing drugs, all that shit at beforehand. Larry just, like fucking uh you know took advantage of it you know it's pretty shitty it's pretty shitty <laughs> it does not make harmony corinne uh look any better than he already did it actually makes sense like seeing him way back when he was just the young writer who was probably being exploited as in, in his own right but it was just like Look at this motherfucker. He's like their age, but he's just got like this little cocky bullshit. And it's like dudes talking about, well, it's like one day he just flipped a switch and he was like fake and like was distances himself. And it's like, damn, nigga, no shit. They were really naive to like the reality of all this shit. So if it was happening on even on Harmony Corinne's level at his age, I could only imagine the, the puppet master strings that were being pulled on Larry Clarkson to get this movie off the ground, but. And my house used to sit in the same room. We thought he was a runaway. My brother used to run away all the time, so we thought he was just one of his runaway friends. Harold would bring all kinds of people to our house. Anyone that he thought was great and loved, it was like he wanted to share them with us too. He was so excited because he just really saw how talented Harmony was and and was just, just very taken by Harmony. He and Harold just seemed to really love each other. So right then and there, it's like Harold vouching for this kid, and, and that was a great way to meet him. I mean, he was just, he seemed so great. Because Harold vouched for him, and Harold gave him a stamp of approval? That's it, okay. So you saying you around now. I fucking told you. I think the sex shit takes everybody out. The driving force behind the movie Kids is sex. People are engaging in sex and they are starting young. That is a reality. And the two young men and women Larry chose to follow as examples are the worst case scenario products and results of extremely dangerous behaviors and cycles. Admittedly, a lot of us uh, were obsessed with sex. Made all the more worse in that the characters offending sexually and displaying predatory traits are supposed to be high school age. Through an unflinching lens, we follow a 16-year-old Telly through barely a day's worth of pursuing virgin girls for sex. On the missions accompanying Telly is this stockier friend, Casper, the chillest guy of the whole friend group. Wild energy, infectious laugh, yet at the end of the movie, Casper would go on to rape an unconscious girl at a party simply because he woke up drunk and acted on impulse. The girl Casper assaulted, named Jenny, played by Chloe Sevigny, earlier that day discovered she's HIV positive positive, and the only person she'd ever interacted with sexually was Telly, the boy that took her virginity. You see the pattern here? That is, in a nutshell, the entirety of 1995's Kids. Besides that, you just see a lot of children, high school age, middle school age, like between, I would say, 10 and 17 years old, drinking beer and smoking weed consistently. But there's obviously many layers to this onion, a lot of bases to cover. I'm going to start with what I think the honest reasoning behind making a movie like this was. Just money, no other reason. My very first impression of Larry when I first saw him around taking photos was just like, yo, who's like grandpa? Who this old dude? Like, who is this cat? At that time, like the baggy clothes were in, he, he like, you know, he had, he's wearing like, you know, state tees, he had like, a long hair. He's coming to hang out with these young guys and he's making himself look like them so they would accept him. Remember Harold said, yo, that's Larry Clark. You know, he made this book, Tulsa, Teenage Nuts, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how does he know? And it turns out, told and told everybody. He would ask me questions like, what's the drug of choice for skateboarders? And I said, I don't know, Larry. I think everything. And are they having sex all the time? <laughs> You'd want to meet people. And no one knows kind of who he is at all. Like, no one knows art. So I had 
to be like, no, he's okay. He's a great photographer, which gave him acceptance in the skateboard community. You know, here's his book. People did shooting up drugs, a pregnant woman shooting up drugs. And they're like, well, that's, that's kind of crazy. Most of us didn't even care. But he would have weed. And like good weed too, like really good stuff, you know? He's taking photos of us hanging while the service for service, right? Coaxed me in, fine. I liked it. All right, you can hang around because I know we're going to smoke some good stuff, right? That was my logic. I feel like the fact that Larry entered the scene is like an older person who wasn't homeless, who wasn't broke, and who seemed like he had some sort of resources. Like, okay, how can we make use of this motherfucker? I never trust people like that, you know, just, you know, growing up. Like, why does this guy want to hang around all these kids? I always thought he was a little funny or something, you know what I mean? So I was always had my guard up. Because I always thought, you know, Larry, why do you want to take pictures of us? Why is he telling guys to go to us, <laughs> bringing people to his apartment and buying them beer and, you know, weed and shit, you know what I mean? I always thought it was fun. He just saw this group of, like, these crazy fucking skateboarding kids. Like, we stood out. Like, these fucking guys, the energy's crazy, you know what I mean? Like, the way we look, the way the diversity amongst all of us, and, like, but we were all together, and, like, we had parents that went never around. Like, I feel like he saw, he saw, he saw dollar signs, you know what I mean? That's what people like him do. You know, that's how they make money. I don't think Larry Clark is a closeted pedophile. I had no idea that I was in the minority on that, but it does make sense. I don't think Todd Salons is either. I think Todd Salons is just trying to have calm conversations about horrible realities and like laugh at how fucked up it is. Many find themselves experiencing the shit that happens in Salons movies, but haven't the right words to describe like, I don't know, any besides murder. You know, what What else are you thinking? Todd Salons is also way more respected by people that really watch movies and aren't just wrapped up in emotions. So yeah, shout out him. Larry Clark wouldn't be where he is today without the movie Kids, and Kids wouldn't be where it is today without Harvey Weinstein. I don't care how we view it, Harvey Weinstein gave it the cosign that really mattered, and we see what the fuck he was doing in 1995. The cast of Kids, when examined closely, is very interesting. Each character seemed to have been cast in roles that required them to tread just close enough to borderline illegal. Leo Fitzpatrick plays Telly, was 14 at the time, but his character is playing 16. The 12 year old Telly Rapes was 17. Real name was Sarah Henderson. Rosario Dawson in her scene openly talking sex was 15. Chloe Savigny was 19. Harold Hunter and Justin Pierce as Casper had just turned 20. Now you know in case you didn't. The outrage felt regarding their work, speaking solely for the scenes they're depicted in, should remain as fictional as the film. Like, you can be uncomfortable, there's nothing wrong. This includes the opening scene. I'm not defending it as though I like to see shit like this. I'm just mature enough to know it's not real and serves a purpose to the story. It's not like Ken Park where the approach and meaning is totally different. The opening to kids is literally showing you that Telly, while technically old enough to be with a girl this young, as fucked up as that is, is still disregarding consent. As the girl does verbalize in this scene, no, that's how I see it. It's a movie. I don't go any deeper than that. With that said, allow me to direct your attention to all of the real reasons showcased in the We Were Once Kids documentary that I'm going to show you to you now that are totally worth being outraged about. Why I said Larry Clark is kind of scummy and why it was hard to like um, talk about that without a fucking script in front of me pertaining to the underage cast members manipulated by Larry Clark at that time. And then I was like, I was high as a kite. And it's crazy because, like, Larry, like, played along with that shit, man. Like, as a kid, you look like, man, this dude is fucking cool. But also, he got, like, a, a $1.5 million budget, but he's still fighting with a heroin addiction. And these crazy-ass kids in his film, there was always something happening. It was, like, corralling cats. None of us know what the fuck we're doing. None of us know movies. None of us understand continuity. You know, cut, okay, break for the night, and then the next day, Justin comes back with a broken arm. Your lead, all of a sudden, you're wearing a cast? Like, how the fuck are you gonna hide that, you know? We shot that party scene, which is at my character's house, where all the stuff goes down at the end. All these kids in this tiny-ass apartment, and they were night shoots, and it was like, 
just kind of bopping around in the room. Okay, get this, get this, get this. And then, okay, oh, you know what? We gotta shoot this now. So they, okay, Johnny, we need you to go sit there now and make out with Michelle. And, you know, I need you to put your hand in between her crotch and like, you know, Larry's like screaming at me like, rub her crotch harder, man. Like, come on, like really rub her crotch, you know? And it's like, you're like, oh my God, like, you know, this is not like normal, right? This is not normal. And, um, you know, I remember kind of feeling a bit pressured there and stuff. Here's my tongue, and here's a camera, and you know, really wild. You know, you're a 16 year old kid, you don't know what's what, and you're super stoned, and you're like, you know, you're not thinking about these things really, you're just like, well, I'm just going with the flow, you know? You know, they were like, they were gonna do the scene, guys, and we had a party, whatever, we had our shirts off, they were like, we, we got, you know, you guys just gonna smoke and talk. Smoke and talk. They had a tray of mad pre roll blunts. They came, we smoked, we like cut, we light another blunt. We like cut, light another blunt, because we had to, you know, have a fresh blunt every time we started. I remember us being squished, fucking smoking weed, and just talking, you know, just talking for like an hour. They were filming. We smoked like 10 blunts, we were high as hell. We did another scene that night, I literally fell asleep. And in the scene, you see me sleeping. I'm sleeping, I'm really knocked out. I wake up six in the morning, they're like, it's a wrap. I'm like, oh shit, all right, we done, cool. That's how young I was. I couldn't even stay up all night, you know? I was trying to, trying to hang, but that didn't happen. Clearly, the problem isn't that Larry Clark is a predator in that general sense. It's that Larry Clark is just a piece of shit, okay? Please hear me out. If the world were to come together someday and say, the way Larry Clark profited off of the less fortunate youths and kids is deplorable and he should be held accountable and not profit off of anything, everything obviously comes crashing down. This includes tag-along success story Harmony Corinne, as much as I love his work, who really is not the same beast as Larry Clark. How poetically tragic this person who got you in the door at 19 with the project he wanted Corinne to write happened to be something we as a society want you to feel shitty about nearly 30 years later. It is a cascade of negativity on all films that touch upon the same topics, carry with them similar approaches, but this movie Kids is the only film that has actual skeletons in its closet. I feel I've only resonated with the movie Kids because as I can tell who's acting and who's not. Harold passed believing the same lies he was told. Justin passed knowing too much. The documentary We Were Once Kids, to me, felt like the remaining cast that didn't find success in acting coming together to set the facts straight. And at the end of the day, all Harold got was a link at the very end of the fucking film. Like, that should have been present throughout the entire documentary. At times, I didn't feel it was framed appropriately. Hamilton Harrison didn't seem to have been affected as deeply as others. I would have liked to have rather spent more time with that kid who was present during the couch scene. I forgot his name, but Ramirez or something. I was also surprised to not see any co-sign from one Chloe Sevigny or Rosario Dawson, no appearance. If they were exposed to anything that looking back might have been illegal or just like problematic at all, that thought alone snowballs into one of if the world really did Cancel. Larry Clark on behalf of the underage people in the movie Kids, would that hurt the present day careers of Dawson and Savigny? Is that right? Is that why they weren't included? Because the ending of We Were Once Kids lets us know that Clark and Corinne didn't want to provide any statements. I'm just wondering about the cast members that had success, you know? Because this guy right here managed to come back and tell his story. He was very cool. Overall, I'm not canceling Larry Clark myself. This isn't a video that's trying to do so. I'm just speaking my fucking mind since people <laughs> did not like me speaking disorganized before. Now you have a scripted version of that video. You can think what you think. I'll think what I think. Kids is just dated. It's dated. It's very edgy. Watch mid-90s instead, honestly. Uh, the deeper I've dug into this anti-coming-of-age subgenre, to quote John Grande, the more I've realized that some stories are better told with a softer brushstroke, and the, the movies that are speaking on matters regarding children interacting with the world that is crafted by adults, that that's when the softer hand is, is probably appropriate. That seems to translate to any underage actor that happens to be working on the film being treated 
treated like a human being more often, as opposed to just an object for exploitative profit, which is what I feel kids really is at the at the at its core. It's very exploitative. Those are my two cents. Hopefully, I've clarified my stance regarding certain topics and provided enough context receipts to back up my statements. All opinions are just opinions. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye.